Powered by the all-new 2013 Ford Fusion, the official car of CES. Hey, Robert Heron here at CES 2012, hanging out at the Sony booth, of course. You can see it right behind me. Checking out their latest HDTVs, and they have two new flagship models to accompany their current 929. That will still remain the flagship model through 2012. First up will be the HX850. That's going to be shipping in April. It'll be available in a 46 and a 55-inch screen size. It's going to feature an edge-lit system that will also provide local dimming, so you get exceptional black levels as well. Also, it'll have the company's brand new uh, X-Reality Pro uh, video processing engine, so you'll take care of things like noise reduction and 3D processing and make it even more efficient and more realistic. Also, this TV will feature 960 hertz technology. It's essentially a 480 hertz system, which is darn impressive by itself, but it'll do a scanning backlight to effectively double that performance. It's very effective. Also, this will be a monolithic design. Sony uses that term to describe a flat sheet of glass over the surface of the TV, Corning's Gorilla Glass, so it should be pretty tough and easy to clean for parents with their sticky fingered children. Uh, this TV also incorporate built-in Wi-Fi. And moving slightly down the line, they have the HX750 at better value. Same screen sizes as the 850, the 55-inch and the 46-inch. Instead of being the monolithic design, this will be a more traditional frame design. And it will feature an edge-lit LED system, but without the local dimming feature, to let you know. Also, it'll include a 480 hertz technology, which will be an effectively 240 hertz with a scanning backlight system. Both TVs I just mentioned will be 3D compatible, of course. and they will be available in 55 and 46 inch screen sizes. The HX 850 will be available in April, and in March you'll be able to pick up the 750. Sony has not announced any pricing yet, but it should be in line with their current models. Also, they had some future tech on display, a crystal LED display prototype. Very interesting. They have it side by side with their current flagship, the 929. And I'll be honest, it was making the 929 look a little aged. In particular, the new Crystal LED prototype was delivering exceptionally saturated colors. Red was very red, and black is very black. So you're going to get tremendous contrast performance out of this. What is actually driving this panel, though, is a bit of a mystery. Sony's being purposely vague about it, and I found that quite funny. If there's one TV here I really want to grab and take a magnifying glass to and look at the pixel structure, it's this one. Of course, it's on behind the rope, so I can't. What I did learn, though, is that Sony is claiming that they have a super fine LED grid, essentially putting red, blue, green LEDs for each pixel on the display. What this means is it eliminates the need for something called a color filter, and it also will allow not only the color saturation improvement that I mentioned, but also when the TV turns off those LEDs, there is no light, so black is truly black. That also means that it will be very energy efficient. I'd be curious to see if anything becomes of it this year. And as always, if you're interested in this or any other technology that we've covered here at CES, check us out at revision3.com slash CES. The 2013 Ford Fusion features lane keeping system, which is comprised of two subsystems, lane keeping aid and lane keeping warning. It works by using a camera in the back of the rearview mirror that identifies the lines on the road. If the vehicle begins to drift outside the identified lane, the electronic powered assistance steering will vibrate the steering wheel similar to rumble strips. If the vehicle continues to drift after the warning, the E-Pass will then apply steering torque to direct the vehicle back in the lane. Thanks to Ford for powering Techzilla CES coverage.